overview of the different industries, uh, different sectors of the economy, and find sectors other than growth or high tech uh, that I can invest in. Uh, and I want to do this gradually, so start investing in different sectors. And I, I'm thinking about how I could go about doing this. It kind of strikes me as like it makes sense to start with sectors that have been underperformed. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, you want to start with uh, the uh, the industries that are that are historically low. Uh, and so, I've got here the list of the different sectors as well as ETFs uh, for U.S. small, U.S. and global. Uh, the sector constituents, uh, as well as the category for each one of those. So we'll get to IT later. Um, I've already got some exposure to different IT companies. And these are like your Salesforce, Tesla, whatever. Um, but uh, actually, Tesla would be consumer discretionary. But anyway, um, so, so yeah, l- let's get into that. Let's talk about... Um, uh, so here I have a chart uh, for the uh, U.S. ETFs. Uh, it shows the performance of XLK. Uh, XLK I have as an actual chart, so you can look at three months. Okay, over a one-year period, it seems like XLK did really well. So your, your technology did pretty well. Uh, and it was only beat by XLB, which I think is... Uh, I think that's basic materials. Uh, XLB, yeah, basic materials. All right, and so, okay. All right. Well, look. That's over uh, a one-year period, but if you look at three months, or let's take a look at five years, just to get an idea of what the cycles look like. Oh, okay. So, clear outperformance by, by XLK. Uh, and XLB historically, yeah, it's been okay. Like, uh, over a five-year period, it goes down, goes back up. Everything went down in March, uh, but then it went back up uh, nicely. So, yeah, over a five-year period, you get 69% returns relative to 200% for XLK, the IT industry. Energy relatively low uh, compared to historical averages. Uh, even XLP, I think P is, what is P? What is, what is P? Consumer staples. Okay. Consumer staples. XLY is discretionary. Discretionary is back up. Consumer staples. B. Alright, so we'll start with B and I'll take a look at B. Uh, but I, I don't want to, so my preference is for smaller cap companies, uh, and so we'll take a look at U.S. small for uh, basic materials, uh, so that's PSCM. I've already pulled up the uh, holdings for PSCM here, you can see the top 10 holdings are these companies, uh, and so uh, there's two ways we can go about doing this. Uh, we can actually look at actually hit basic materials you'll notice within a particular sector there are many uh, kind of sub industries um, so we can actually pick out a sub industry and look at companies uh, within that sub industry um, and see how many stocks are in each one of them um, maybe start with something that doesn't have that many uh, to either mining or chemical chemical plastic uh, let's take a look at take a look at fertilizers okay I don't know what the difference between fertilizers and agricultural products would be they strike me as being similar Fertilizer and agricultural product. I like looking at. Uh, there's this, this website is really useful. 
fertilizer and manufacturing in the U.S., okay? If you want to get an idea for how an industry operates, I've, I found this, this website to be pretty useful. It gives you a good high-level overview. You can see first-tier suppliers are organic chemical manufacturing in the U.S., petrochemical, and inorganic chemical manufacturing, and industrial machinery and equipment. Okay. This is so bad. Like, the audio quality here is just going to be absolutely horrible. Background music, there's a lot of cars passing by. Well, this is an experiment. Yeah, it's okay. It's alright if it's, if it's not perfect, as long as it's improving over time. Yeah, it's really hot, though. It's really hot. Uh, maybe I want to switch to another area where it's not as hot. Yeah, I think I'll do that, actually. Let's just pause. We're looking at the fertilizer and manufacturing industry in the U.S. Uh, this is a constituent of the materials, or basic materials, uh, sector. So, alright, let's try and see if we can find a good company in the, this sector. So, you just click on fertilizers. There's, apparently there's seven stocks uh, in fertilizers. Alright, and you can see performance here. Alright, blah blah. Uh, rank of stocks. Okay, so these are these are the stocks uh, in. Uh, see all stocks in industry. Okay, let's see if we can get those. One to ten of fourteen. All right, so I actually want to find not all stocks in the industry, but I want to find uh, the constituents of the micro cap. So the, the ones that are kind of on the smaller side. Those are. Those are the companies I prefer to, to invest in. So let's see. Uh, let's see how we can find those. Uh, I think you can... Fin, Finbox probably has them. Oh, man. And my laptop just gets insanely slow the minute I, uh, I start screen recording. Anyway, Finbox... Alright, so, yeah, I should be able to uh, pick out just just the companies in, say, the U.S. Oh, dear God, this is so slow. Alright, so, we just want it to be less than... Less than, say, five billion. And I don't care about P ratio. I don't care about debt to equity. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of look into that in a little bit. And then you want to pick the uh, industry. Okay. And we're interested in fertilizer. Fertilizer. <laughs> Uh, I think this is picking the uh, the overall industry. Agriculture? No, they don't even have agriculture. Let's try industry group. Yeah, it's not going to be here. Huh. Sector. It should be industry. Sector is like a higher level group. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna be here. I mean, it's materials, yeah, but. Uh, okay. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna select a subsector. Sector. supposed to be industry, man. Like, why, why can't I pick industry GICS? What is this GICS? Mm. I guess chemicals? That'd be the closest one that I can see. 
it certainly feels like this should be agriculture. Well, I don't see an agriculture option here. Paper and forest products. Huh. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird you can't... N-A-I-C-S. Oh, maybe you could just look at major companies here. Although really, you don't want to find major companies if you're looking for the smaller ones, right? Yeah, probably not. Not the major companies. Stock screener. Oh, there's this uh, Guru Focus. Let's see. I bet they have some sort of some sort of screener that we can use. Yeah, screeners. All-in-one screener. All right, we are interested in industry. All right, there we go. I can see agriculture. Yeah, this is great. And market cap. Yeah, we can we can filter by under mega and region country. Hmm, how do you filter by, by listed exchange? Uh, headquarters. Okay, I mean, it's not necessarily the headquarters. Hmm, I think what we're actually interested in is the listing country. Uh, so... How do you find that exchange from home exchange? No. Yeah, it's weird you can't filter. Oh, just region. Yeah, there's a region. What happened here? All right, exclude all of these countries. And just focus on, we'll just focus on the US for now. And we can exclude. Yeah, I could just leave that. Okay. All right, so we have uh, all of these companies. Uh, it's quite a few of them actually. Uh, in this, in this agriculture industry. Okay. Maybe let's put a minimum market cap of, yeah, 50. Just so we're not looking at these really, really tiny ones. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not really sure uh, where we can start. I guess we could just pick out, uh, pick out any of them. We could start with the biggest one, K-P-L-U-Y. K-P-L-U-Y. Yeah, interestingly, it's not it's not in this list uh, the PSCM materials. I mean, it'd be nice if like the top ten holdings, like you could actually see a breakdown of the holdings, uh, as well as maybe it's in here, right? Um, so I want to see the holdings as well as the sector for each holding, since I, I won't actually recognize any of these companies. Yeah. Uh, I guess you could take like the company name uh, and then get the details from inside there, but that just seems like a lot of work. Hmm. Okay. Especially since like we can actually filter by market cap. And these are all US based. Okay. It's different sectors. Like you can actually see the sector breakdown here. You can see specialty chemicals takes up 26%. Steel is 20%. Commodity chemicals. I don't actually see agriculture here. 
That's weird. You don't see agriculture. Yeah. That's really weird. Why do you have airspace and defense? Huh. Food processing? Maybe they put it under food processing. Yeah, who knows, right? Anyway, um... Cool. So, you can actually see a list of companies here. Uh, industry rank for fertilizers. Uh, I don't know if any of these actually show up in the screener that we have here. Let's see. Um, ERE, SMG, Moss, IPI, CF. IPI, there it is. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe just start with IPI then. Sure, let's do that. So, we'll pull up the fundamentals for IPI. And I also like uh, doing a comparison by peers. Uh, since we already have a list of companies uh, based on our screener, we could probably run with that. But uh, otherwise, you can always pick up peers this way. Uh, you use the street ratings, uh, and it pulls up peers for different companies. Uh, but we have the screener, so it can tell you, you know, any of these companies. Uh, IPI, ICL, is, is ICL in here? No weird AVD what's AVD oh AVD there it is yeah so we can compare it to AVD although we'll we'll give AVD a closer look as well right um, so let's do company company reviews yeah really it's industry uh, agriculture uh, it's fertilizer it's not even agriculture. Oh, okay. So I've got for, I've got agriculture here. Agricultural inputs, which I assume is fertilizer, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, you don't really have that option here, but whatever. Okay. Huh. <laughs> this is so weird. Everybody, they're different people call it different things. Here, you don't have agricultural inputs. You don't have fertilizers either. It's like each different namings for different industries. They're different standards as well, so it's such a pain uh, pulling all this crap out. Anyway, um, so let's see what we got here. Uh, Intrepid produces and sells potash and langibinite products in the U.S. Operates through th three segments, potash, trio, and oil field. Fertilizer input, a component in drilling and fracturing fluids for oil and gas wells. And as a nutrient supplement in animal feed. Huh. What do you know? It's like a mixture of all of these different industries. Trio offers a specialty fertilizer. And oil field solutions, segments, cells water for use in the oil and gas service industry. Sells water? And offers potassium chloride real-time mixing services on location. It provides salt for use in animal fields, feeds, industrial applications, pool salts, and treatment of roads and walkways. Okay, so a bunch of chemicals, basically. Interesting. So it seems like agriculture is like the high-level thing, but it also does a bunch of other stuff curious okay all right so you know the drill well, let's go through this the same way we always go through this um, you can see revenue has been dropping so what I want to see is let's do IPI versus um, what is it PSCM yeah I'm gonna compare it to PSCM the overall market index and just see how how it compares and let's do that over six months. Whoa, wow, okay. All right. It's just gone up like crazy in the past three months. Whoa, 90% increase in three months? Wow, that's mad. Even though PSCM only went up. Wait, what? Oh, that can't be real.
No, PSCM is actually out outperformed. But if you look at since October, for instance, wow, IPI has just gone crazy, huh? Why is it going? Why is it like all over the place here? Is this log? I can't tell. Let me move this a little bit. Oh, it's a percentage. It's a percentage chart. Three months? Wow. Oh, there's something wrong with this chart. This can't be real. Why does PSCM look like that? No, oh, there's gotta be something wrong. Is it PSCM? Yeah, it's PSCM. What about an XLB? Let's compare it to XLB. This doesn't look right, man. Yeah, it does, actually. Huh. So it is right. What on earth happened? IPI? It went nuts, huh? Let's just look at IPI on its own. Whoa, look at that. This is madness. So it was trading at... It was trading at 17 and doubled in the past three months. Whoa, wow. Look what happened. Like it went from 18 to 25 in one day. Whoa, this is madness. Huh, in a span of four hours. What was that, earnings? What on earth caused it? This makes no sense. Whoa. 31. This is crazy, man. Whoa. Interesting. Anyway, uh, let, so let's take a look at the fundamentals. Back to the fundamentals. Yeah, I just wanted to get an idea for how it performs versus the industry. So it looks like it was underperforming for a while, uh, and then it just, boom, blew up. And, uh, yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I wonder if it's already too late, like if it's even worth reviewing this because, you know, the, the company's already done like crazy well. All right, uh, don't worry about this, this NA stuff. This is me trying to get industry uh, industry averages uh, and it looks like it doesn't have it for, for agriculture. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Uh, revenues dipped, okay. Share is pretty stable debt stable oh they repaid some debt in 2020 um, 57 million compared to 197 not too bad debt to equity is 0.3 yeah okay uh equity multiplier i mean it doesn't seem like we have a big problem with uh, insolvency it doesn't look like the company is going to go insolvent cash ratio is 0.3 so pretty a bit on the low side but if the debt was more i'd be concerned or it doesn't look like the debt is that high. Cash over interest. They've got enough cash to cover five years of interest. 4.6. So, not too worried about that. Alright. Uh, let's take a look at assets. So again, let's take... It's good to take notes while doing this. Agriculture. Inputs. Is that what they're called? Alright, so we're looking at IPI. Okay, so let's see what they got. Um, tangible assets is 40 bucks uh, out of 42 so not a whole lot of the intangibles that's good uh, book is 31 buck actually went down since last year uh, which kind of so unless they're paying out dividends it typically means something goes something has gone wrong or maybe they repurchase shares which didn't happen here maybe they paid back some debt yeah they did pay back some debt so maybe they paid back some debt from the cash that they had they retained earnings all right, cash per share is 1.5, so cash dipped a little bit. Not too worried about that. Liquidation to common is 30. This is like common overhang. It's essentially a uh, company's uh, uh, liquid assets uh, minus, or assets minus uh, liabilities. And then you, um, then you uh, divide it by a number of outstanding shares. 
Uh, actually, that'd be book. Uh, I also removed debt. Uh, so uh, you can think of this as uh, liquid liquid assets uh, minus uh, liabilities uh, minus debt uh, divided by number of shares. I think. I'm not entirely sure. We can double check. Probably a good idea to have a description of these things. So I think I made this up, a liquidation of common. I just thought it'd be uh, an important indicator. Yeah, it's uh, tangibles uh, minus liabilities uh, over a number of shares. Okay, so it's kind of like your your assets minus intangibles um, minus liabilities over a number of shares. So it ignores uh, any intangibles that you might have. Okay. So let's let's just put a note there. So uh, tangibles minus liabilities uh, over shares. Okay, cool. That's a that's a good reference to have. No dividends. Looks like they paid dividends a while ago, a really long time ago. It was in 2011, uh, and then they stopped. They didn't like it. All right, cool. So uh, let's take a look at actual performance. This is gonna be interesting. So you can see gross margin is 5%. What? That is so bad. Gross margin, 5%? I've never seen a company that bad. 20%. So it went from, okay, so this is really bumpy, but it looks like on average, they're probably around 10%, slightly less or more. Uh, beta margin uh, is, Okay, so whenever you see a beta margin greater than gross margin, it means that depreciation and amortization uh, is actually more than uh, the uh, the rest of the operating expenses. Um, and so that's why you would have a, an EBITDA margin uh, greater than the actual gross margin. Seems to be the case here. like Which kind of tells you that they have a lot of assets. A lot of tangible assets uh, where depreciation is significant. Depreciation, amortization. Operating margin, minus 12. Okay, so it looks like it's been flirting with the negative before, uh, and then it went positive for the past two years, uh, and then just gave up and dropped 12%. But again, this is a COVID year, so I don't know if, I don't know if that's a problem. Maybe it's not, maybe it is. No income. You want to see a positive operating cash flow. That's what you want to see, and they've they've had positive operating cash flow for a while. So that's good, uh, even if earnings are negative. Uh, if you have that positive operating cash flow, it's good. Uh, free cash flow is also positive. Uh, at least it was in 2020. 2019 was a different story. Uh, net cash flow is negative. So this is because they're repaying debt, I assume. Yeah. All right. As a turnover, yeah, it looks like it's about, it's in line with historical performance. The return on equities dropped negative. I guess plastics was not doing really well. Uh, plastics, why am I talking about plastics? Uh, this fertilizer segment was probably not doing really well uh, historically. If you look at five years, let's see, five years. Okay, yeah, I mean, it looks like in 2020, it didn't do so great, uh, but towards the end of the year, uh, it kind of picked up, and uh, that might have reflected better in, in their performance, or at least in their numbers. So maybe first quarter numbers are going to look a lot better uh, than they did historically. Uh, otherwise, yeah, probably, probably the whole industry didn't do so well. But I know, I'm, I'm making this stuff up. Cool. Okay, um, so how would you price something like this? No dividends, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I would say, so it's, it's gonna be a fraction of tangible book. But what fraction? Uh, that fraction is gonna depend on uh, the stability of future revenue, uh, or at least the future revenue trend. Um, if it's positive, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe like 20, 25, 30%. Maybe it's good to compare it to the peer group, just so you have an idea. Um, so your enter enterprise value uh, is 34. Yeah, just a bit of that. It's two times revenue, one times book. Whoa, 0.77 tangible book. That's pricey. 
At least it seems to me like it might be pricey. You can see relative to AVD, uh, it's actually less pricey. Maybe historically, wow, 33 times EBITDA. Has EBITDA been positive this whole time? Uh, yeah, at least for the past few years. So yeah, you could you could look at EV EBITDA. 33, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, when you compare it to AVD, AVD is only 16 times EBITDA. But relative to tangible book, it's doing all right. 71 times earnings, wow. It's pretty generous. Let's compare it to AVD here. Let's see what that's about. Yeah, similar trend. But not nearly as crazy as what happened to IPI. This, like, I, I really need to understand what on earth happened here. Like, <laughs> in December, December 31st. It's like the market just woke up and said, hey, yeah, this stock deserves more. More care and attention. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, maybe it's a good idea. This looks pricey. 0 0.7, 0 0.77 tangible book. Um, so typically, I, I want to assess... I want to assess the risk of this going bankrupt. Uh, and also highlight any red flags I see. So you can see net income. Net income is negative. So that's concerning. Mm -hmm. Positive operating cash flow. It kind of feels like it's expensive. And 30x... Uh, it's 30x, right? 33. I mean, historically, that's pretty high. It's only in 2017 that it hit 34x. Uh, hmm. Okay. All right, let's compare it to AVD. See what AVD does. Specialty chemicals for agriculture, commercial, and consumer uses in the U.S. and internationally. Okay. Kind of seems like it's in the same industry. Oh, the cash ratio is way worse. A lot more debt. But debt to equity is similar. No, actually, it's way worse. Debt to equity is 1 versus 0.3. All right. So, what's the bankruptcy risk here quick ratio is one so that's that's encouraging point one cash ratio though cash over interest is just under two years hmm pretty big company maybe they have bonds ABD let's see let's see if they have any All right, Let's see what they got. Hmm, paying a dividend, I see. Interesting. 22 in assets, 15 tangible. Wow, that's pretty high for a stupid agriculture plan. Why are your intangibles so high? Whoa, that's crazy. 230 million in intangibles? Wow. <laughs> Look at cash. It's 10. Whoa, this is scary. Accounts receivable is up as well. That's never a good sign. Yeah, this looks scary. Like, uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with their bankruptcy risk. I think there's a real risk of them going bankrupt. And they're paying dividends? I said it's a 22, 15, 10 pull. Okay. Books down. Cash per share, 0.3. Three bucks if they liquidate. <laughs> it's a pretty sour deal. All right, let's hope this looks better. All right, gross margin's definitely better, thirty-eight percent. Why such a huge difference though? Nine percent EBITDA versus seven. So EBITDA is similar. EBITDA margin, operating margin. 4%. Alright, positive operating margin. 
positive VPS. That's good. Oh, that is good. Operating cash flow, definitely positive. Uh, right. Okay. That well, looks pretty good. Hey, net income is kind of thin. Actually, it's okay. Two, three, five percent. Yeah. This looks good. This is, business looks solid. So just the debt situation, that's a bit scary. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I mean, so, like, the reason I, I, I'm I very wary of a debt situation uh, is because, one, so I don't like companies with a lot of debt uh, for religious reasons. Uh, I don't invest in companies that have a lot of interest payments uh, or where, like, they rely on uh, on debt to operate uh, just because it you know interest um, and uh, yeah I'm a Muslim so uh, companies that rely on interest I don't invest in for religious reasons and number two there's also the risk right high leverage means high risk uh, and so you want to be able to make sure that the company can manage all this debt and so if it's if it's very leveraged uh, you're going to have to demand a premium. Uh, so yeah, you discount you discount earnings, you discount uh, valuation. That's how you do it. Um, so let's see, how would, how would I value this uh, even before looking at price? Um, so I would say in earnings per share, positive to 0.3. Historically, it's been maybe... Say 0.4. 10 times earnings? Yeah, that'd be rubbish. But then you have to consider the dividend as well. The dividend they've, they've been paying is at, okay, that's pretty pathetic, at a few cents here and there. In its heyday, it was 20 cents. So maybe call it 7 cents. Multiply that by 10, that's point, point 0.7. So not much. Yeah, I mean, frankly, there's not a whole lot to, to look at. You can consider a fraction of tangible book. I don't know, man. It's, it's hard at price. Like, maybe 10? 10, 10 bucks a share? Like, I, I wouldn't be comfortable more than 10, 12. Whoa, it's a 20. Okay. <laughs> yeah, not excited about that. 20 times earnings. Historically, that's just ridiculously high. Look at that. It's only in 2009 that it hit 67 times earnings. Yeah, this is expensive. I don't know if I'd be comfortable with that. Wait, 20 times EBITDA. 70 times earnings. Oh, dear Lord. Wow. That is... That is pricey. Yeah, I'm not excited about this. AVD, IPI. Okay, guys, we're going to have to move on. Like, it's been half an hour and I've only reviewed two companies. I don't even know. 20 times EBITDA. 70 times earnings. So this is positive net income. Uh, and then there's a risk... risk uh, low cash ratio high uh, actually two years cash I don't know like maybe maybe it's okay like you have positive EPS so uh, I think you'd you'd be okay and then maybe if you can see interest coverage, uh, this is uh, interest over, uh, so net income over interest, uh, it's 3.6. Okay, like I wouldn't worry too much. Interest coverage. Mm, high. Yeah, I think bankruptcy risk is relatively low because you have that positive earnings. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Let's see if there's a story there that we can lean on. Now it's been a while since anyone's written anything about 
2020 Q3 earnings in November. No, oh, they haven't released earnings for the last quarter of last year. Sure taking their own sweet time though, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, I don't know, between AVD and IPI. IPI, I just don't get what's going on with their with their stock price, man. It's just nuts. How, how do you jump around so much? Okay, let's, let's just kill, kill AVD, kill XLD. I just wanna see. I just want to see regular. It's dirty. Wow. It's just jumping around like crazy. Maybe it's a thin order book, right? If I'd bought 27, I could sell at 30. Wow. What does the volume look like? What is this? I didn't see. Mm, very thin volume driving. Yeah, maybe. maybe it's just crazy. Like it's actually very difficult to buy the stock. IPI. Hmm. I don't know. Now let's let's see if there's another company we can compare this to. So we've already seen. AVD, we've seen IPI. Let's see what else we get. No, I don't know if this process is working, man. Balchem Corp. I mean, maybe filtering by sub industry is probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe it's just easier to uh, focus on the actual companies in the index and see if they make sense to invest in. And then look at their peers. Yeah, probably a better way to go about doing this. At least, like, I want to get a sense for what the average multipliers look like uh, for the average ratios for PE, for tangible book price of tangible book i'm not seeing anything like they they seem to trade around two times revenue um, or one times book but AVD is higher maybe we need a third company just to get a baseline so a third agricultural company huh where's zach's you're supposed to okay industry bank fcf IPI? Okay, we've seen IPI. Uh, let's take a look at TF. What is TF? TF. Sounds like a real fertilizer-y name. Hydrogen, nitrogen for clean energy fertilizer, emissions abatement, okay, whatever. Yeah, cool. Um, so we just look at the multiples, you can see they're trading at, wow, even more expensive, 3.5 times revenue. One times book. So yeah, okay. Looks like one times book is pretty normal. Uh, 10 times a beta, 40 times earnings. Do they have positive earnings? They do, yes. Huh. All right, let's take a look. Revenue has dropped, 2015, at uh, 2020. They bought back some shares, that's nice. That's, they've been repaying debt since 2018, 2019. Debt equities two. So a bit on the high side. Quick ratio is one, cash ratio is pretty good. Interest coverage, 3.4. Okay, uh, that situation seems okay, um, CF. I like, uh, I like what I'm seeing here. Okay, let's see what they have. 44, the tangibles are pretty high. Uh, book is growing. Uh, it's 13 times, 13 per share, cash is 3 a share, liquidation of common is 15. Okay, nice, 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 very nice. Dividends, 1.2. Dividends have been going up for a while. Wow. Dividends, nice, okay. All right, that definitely deserves uh, a bit more on the share price. It's definitely worth a bit more because of those dividends. So the way I'd price it is, if you're if you're looking at tangible book, 
So it's going to be higher than liquidation. It's worth more than liquidation to common and less than tangible book. And, you know, the ratio between those two varies depending on what you're looking at. But I'm thinking maybe, say, 25. It's about half tangible book. Slightly more than half, maybe 0.6. So 25, uh, and then you're going to pay for the dividend. That's another 10x. So 25 plus 12, 37. Uh, 37 is a great price. It's 48. Uh, but let's take a look at the numbers. Make sure we're getting a good deal. Wow, 8%, 8% net income. Wow. Wait, what? Wow. This is good, especially relative to the peers. Like even, even AVD, which had positive net income. It wasn't anywhere near it. It was like 5%. What is it? 2%. 2% in the last year. I think 5%, like, historically. Let's see. Net income. Yeah, it, was, it hit 5%, then 3%, 2%. Yeah, okay. Like, so it's a bit more than 2% historically. But wow, this is a lot better. And they only went negative here. Earnings per share. Pretty strong earnings. Wow. I'm actually impressed. This looks really good. It's a bit expensive though. 48, I don't know. I don't know about 48. And 64 EV, right, the debt. Four billion in debt, debt's actually more than revenue. Nah, I never like it when debt's more than revenue and debt to equity is over one. Yeah, it's a lot of debt. It's a lot of debt, what's interest expense? Oh yeah, I haven't updated the sheet to show me interest expense. Uh, I really should do that. So I wanna add this underneath and maybe do comparisons here so I can actually see, instead of like changing this each time, I'd be able to do comparisons between two companies, two or three or even more. Uh, that'd be nice. You could just scroll and see how companies do relative to each other. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea actually. Anyway, um, so yeah, very, like, the debt's really high. I don't like that. Um, three times, three times revenue, so not cheap. Three times book, three and a half times book, one times tangible book. So yeah, the one times tangible book I don't like. Nine times EBITDA, so that, that seems okay. 40 times earnings. Yeah, I don't like the debt situation here. Debt situation is bad debt greater than revenue but still you can see that interest coverage uh, is three interest coverage is three means your net income uh, more than covers your interest expense so that's good interest coverage uh, 3.8 I think which is good yeah it looks all right and strong dividend, 1.2. It is expensive though. I don't know. Like I, I would monitor their, I would monitor the debt situation to see that they're actually repaying debt. Yeah, maybe you can check actually. Yeah, they they don't always have the latest figures here, um, so checking seeking alpha helps. Just so I know. All right, have they released? Okay, see. SEC annual report. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, we've already got the details. So this information is pretty fresh. This is for the entire year, 2020. So nothing new to look at. CFC's severe winter weather tightening fertilizer production. Ah, yeah, okay. All right, I would have expected to see this in, uh, where is it is? Yeah, I mean, like, so the industry seems to be heavily impacted by, by the weather. I, I didn't consider that, right? The weather, demand from crop production. Oh, okay, all right. So if, if you have adverse weather conditions, then that's gonna impact demand for fertilizer. Duh, right? Uh, I didn't consider that. Right, right, that makes a lot of sense. So, adverse weather conditions impact demand for fertilizer. That is good to know. 
detector. What is it? Materials. Detector materials, yeah. Okay. So I can create one. Industry. Fertilizer. So we're gonna tag that materials. Alright, um, so impacted, so demand driven by crop production, adverse weather conditions. Exposed to adverse weather conditions. Vulnerable. This is interesting. Yep, 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 yep. So first year buyers are farm suppliers wholesaling in the US, tools and hardware, peace goods, notions, apparel. Yeah, apparel. Okay. Wouldn't expect that though, right? Price of fertilizer. Um It's also impacted by the uh, oil industry, right? So, CF looks pretty good. I like CF, uh, except for the debt situation. So maybe maybe you could monitor it. I don't like their debt situation. I want to see what their interest looks like. Um, so I want to add like the income statement to this, so I can actually see the interest expense and whether it's significant compared to revenue. Because right now I can't really see. But you can see cash over interest. So you flip that. Uh, 1 over 3.8.25. So interest is uh, 0.25 of cash. Okay. It's 150 million. Uh, 150 million over revenue of 150 over revenue of 4124. So just about 3%. Okay. 3, 3.5%. It's, it's more than I'd like, but it, I wouldn't consider it material yeah I wouldn't consider it material so yeah uh, maybe maybe okay maybe okay but we can we can look into this so TV see ya I like the dividend severe weather tightening fertilizer production Tightening of North American supply could be noticeable. Losing hundreds of thousands of tons of night. Whoa, what? Wait. Boost the company's already strong outlook. Widespread disruptions in the industry could boost the company's already strong outlook. I don't get it. What? Wait, how? Tightening of North American supply could be noticeable. Oh, tightening of supply, not demand. Wait, I gotta understand this. Nothing? Uh, actually, maybe maybe we'll figure it out from here. From your activities, manufacturing ammonia. Okay. Key external drivers, demand from car production. Competition is high and increasing. Okay. Huh.
I don't understand. Like industry outlook. Yeah, maybe interest industry outlook. An increase in pro crop production will likely raise demand for fertilizer. Right, demand from crop production is expected to decline in 2020. That's why, because people will eat less, consume less. But I guess crop production is considered a, um, or maybe it's because of the supply chain issues as a result of COVID. High level of volatility. Wheat, rice, and corn consume almost half of all fertilizer in agriculture. Okay, that's good to know. Wheat, rice, corn, consume half of fertilizer. Demand's increased, but prices dropped. Prices of these items have dropped in recent period, resulting in lower demand for fertilizer. Why, though? If prices drop, I assume demand increases. So demand for grain crops has increased and prices have decreased? Estimates that industry employment has increased. Okay. More than 50% of nitrogen consumed within the U.S. comes from international markets. Wow. Okay. Potash, nitrogen, greater than 50% comes from outside. Stronger US dollar decreases demand. So if the US dollar goes up, then theoretically at least, Increases imports. So if the US, the US dollar gets stronger, it's cheaper to import products unless they're gonna implement some sort of trade restrictions or tax. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of all of this. I mean, as a company, CF seems okay. It seems decent. Price is pretty high. Like. 
It's just at the 50 RSI mark. I like buying it slightly lower. Mm, maybe around the 43 mark. Yeah, if it drops to around 43, maybe that's a good opportunity to buy. It's around last month. I saw it drop to 40. Yeah, just about 43. I think at that price level would be okay. I, I, I consider it. But again, like my expectation was, all right, give it 25 bucks for uh, the operations. Actually, maybe maybe a little bit better uh, because their net income margin is so high. I don't even know why. Like operating margin is 15, net income. Yeah, because you have a significant tax uh, interest expense. Okay, net income. Yeah, roughly 8% on average, 8 9%. Do they have any tax assets? Is that driving up net income? Yeah, small though. Okay, so my drop after those tax assets have been consumed, but they've been going up pretty steadily. Yeah, so um, 9%, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'd say 44 times earnings. 10 times the beta. Versus AVD. What about IPI? IPI is 31. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 31 times the beta? Wow. Yeah, I'd say CF. CF is actually pretty good. But I'm not going to buy it at this price. You know, probably around, yeah, like I said, 40. 40 would be nice. Um, so I'm going to add a stock alert for this. 43. Let's call it 43. So let's say CF. 43. Price target, 43. And if I remember correctly, there was no... There wasn't any mention of CF in Seeking Alpha. Still bullish as crop prices rise. Okay. Hmm, this was in December. How did it do in December? Oh, that was a nice call. 37? Yeah, 37 to 48, that's nice. This guy's smart. Oh, come on. I hate it when this happens. Operates in low cost geography. Environmental concerns. Hmm. Essential industry, especially in countries that support domestic food production. All right, all right, all right, all right. World population is increasing. Crop production, um, okay, yeah. Mm hmm. Hey, Bush. Gosh, it's been a while since I read about that. Back in high school chemistry, I think. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 60% of global fertilizer production is in Asia, with China producing about 60 million tons. Okay, okay, okay. Major nitrogen fertilizer producer based mainly in the US. Wow, they have the largest.
largest ammonia plant in the world. Two plants in Canada. Not ammonia, three, three, six, okay. The US, they pay the lowest amount for natural gas than anywhere in the world. Okay, so natural gas prices, as they drop, uh, they uh, drop the cost of producing fertilizer, which I assume results in improved margins for our friends at CF. Costs driven by natural gas prices. Yara has global operations, including Canada, but their overall production cost as a percentage of revenue, so uh, margin, right? Uh, he's talking about COGS. Production costs, yeah, COGS. So COGS margin is Tiara 2018 2019 uh, COGS. Wow, okay, all right. Cost of revenue, 74. Not a huge difference. Oh, wow, okay. Operating expenses. Whoa, okay. I thought operating expenses would represent um, your other things, like your fixed costs, right? Yeah, this would be your plants, your employees, stuff like that, right? Yara puts labor costs into operating expenses. CF includes labor costs and cost of revenue. Wow, okay. Why? <laughs> That's kind of weird. Look at the peer group that he's picking. None of the companies we've already seen. You can see PE and uh, yield. Operating margin. Wow, their operating margin is better by miles. The main issue is whether they can handle the trend to green ammonia production. They're introducing carbon sequestering steps. Target price of CF, $50 for CF in the next year. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of my feeling too, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's too expensive at this level. First time in 10 years, grain farmers will be profitable in 21. Positive effect of higher grain prices on fertilizer. Okay. 
Seasonal influences are positive on a real and relative basis. Period of seasonal strength for materials which runs from November 20th to May 5th. Oh, I didn't even know such a thing existed. Material sector, seasonality. What did it say? From November 20th to May 5th. November 20th to May 5th. Then it drops. Interesting. All right, it's good to know. We'll see what happens by the end of Feb, which the seasonal charts suggest is a sell point. Hope history repeats itself. That said, I don't like to sell good companies in this. They're clearly overvalued, so we shall have to wait and see okay so we're actually at the sell point that's good to know end of five sell point eh, it looks like it's dropping a little bit but i don't know if you can expect for this trend to continue probably not i don't know man like i'm not gonna sit here and try to pretend i know what i'm talking about okay all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I think we found our pick for uh, this sector. Uh, that's gonna be CF. We just need to wait for the right price. I'm not gonna buy at this price. Wait until it drops. Um, see if there's any, any other company that you'd be interested in looking at. Um, since, yeah, I mean, since this is gonna be, I didn't realize this is a, such a global like US prices could be impacted by imports um, from companies overseas. So maybe it would make sense to take a look at some of the some of the overseas players to see, you know, if there's any if there's anything there. Uh, let's take a look at Mosaic just real quick and compare it to CF to make sure they're fertilizer. Yeah, North American internationally, phosphates, potash, mosaic, fertilizantes. Sounds like a food, man. Fertilizantes. All right, so just real quick, revenues, um, slight decline. Debt, they've been buying back debt. How's the it, how's it situation here? One, debt to equity, I like that. Better than CF. Quick ratio is 0.7, cash ratio is 0.2, okay, cash over interest, interest coverage. So slightly lower interest coverage, um, so a bit a bit concerning, but it seems okay. Now let's take a look at what they have. All right, low intangibles. Books 25, cash per share is one, liquidation in common, and they have a dividend. So that's nice. Margins, that's the name of the business, right? That's what matters. So 13% of beta. Operating margin is 5, net income is 8. Wow, you don't see that often. Operating margin is lower than net income margin. How's that? Like, they have some sort of tax credit? 
using up tax assets. Well, tax assets are up. Well, it's either that or their interest expense dropped because they bought back. No, that was just 50 million. I don't know. Why is it? I don't know why net income is higher. Uh, but it looks like it's just that year. It's not consistent. Okay. Earnings per share is 1.76, so it's positive. Been positive for a while. It only dipped negative in 2019. Don't know why that is. Operating cash flow has been positive for a while. That's good. Asset turnover is going up. That's not good. Well, actually, it's dipped. Like, yeah, it's been relatively low. So, yeah, looking at all this, uh, dividend, probably two bucks a share, and then uh, tangible book, between tangible book and, well, cash per share. It's a big range. Uh, if you say 20, 20, 25, depending on their operating margin or net income margin, net income margin is actually pretty decent. Yeah, net income margin is pretty decent. I'd say, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put it at maybe book 49 ah, maybe book value you know book, book value or multiple of beta beta per share is 294 say three bucks 30 probably around 30 and then add around 25 I'd say 25 and then add two bucks for a dividend 27 uh, probably a good price is around 27 yeah current price is 30 and if you have a revenue is 1.8 price to book price to tangible book so it's 0.6 tangible book value that's nice 14 times a beta 24 times earnings uh, versus CF which is 44 but but it's 14 times a beta versus uh, CF7 yeah I kind of like CFs better mm. maybe we can do a comparison what was this? Uh, mosaic? What's the ticker? MLS. Yeah, I'll do a quick comparison with CF. Yeah, same trend. Same trend. If you look at three months, Mars looks like it's outperformed. to get rid of CF and I think a good buy point yeah around 20 yeah, if it drops again maybe around 20 28 I mean you can see it's just over the 50 just over 50 RSI I'd say around 28 28 would be a good price so maybe maybe get Moz on there as well around 28 to that situation better than CF debt to equity is just one interest coverage um, it's almost three and uh, what multiple of Vita uh, I think it was 40 uh, 14 so 14x Vita Price target, 28. Yeah. It's at 30 now, so I think I think it'll probably dip soon, and you can pick some up. Price to earnings is nice, 24. Yeah, I like this. And they have a dividend. It's a tiny dividend, but yeah. I mean, 0.2 over, what was it, 28? Yeah, it's pathetic. Pretty pathetic. I mean, unless it goes back to like the one dollar level, that'd be three and a half percent. Right now, it's pathetic. Cool. Okay. So that's the uh, that's a fertilizer uh, industry. Uh, I think that's enough uh, for today. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to another industry next. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for th thanks for tuning in. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, or don't. It's up to you. Adios. <laughs>